but didn't pay good, so I'd give it up. <laughs> you was probably drunk, paying no mind. Well, now, Captain, you know that the Volstead Act has made drinking liquor illegal. And I'm a law-abiding man, I never touch it. Uh, well, you should probably go ahead and have a little nip. I'll call the town constable. He'll come lock you up in the cellar, since he's also the local bootlegger. Some of the best damn liquor ever cooked up in the state of Vermont. <laughs> right there for the drinking. I'll come down and let out so you can do chores. Well, that don't sound too bad. <laughs> I recall I sent you men out for some killing and told you to fetch it back before we get a barn full of busted udders. And if you fellas don't get it done, them cows won't be the only ones miserable. Come on, Ma. Come on. Here you go, ma'am. Thank you, Henry. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Morning. You know I might find a garage around here? Well, if you was looking for one, you'd probably find one right here. <laughs> no, no, I mean a garage for automobiles. That doesn't look like what I'm looking for. Well, they weren't made for the motor car, if that's what you mean, but it fits them pretty good. No, no, you see, I need a garage that tows cars and fixes them and that sort of thing. Well, I've never seen this garage do nothing like that. I've seen the hay barn unload a wagon once in a hurry over the hill place. No, it's like hay man wearing all that scared. I uh, happen to have a few greenback dollars for the first man who could find me, a mechanic, with a tow truck. I, for one, would have a hard time finding you, a mechanic with a tow truck. You ain't got enough grease on you to be a mechanic, and any fool can see you ain't got a tow truck. I'll make believe I find you a mechanic with a tow truck for only one dollar. It'll take some doing, but I'll do it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm afraid I'm not making myself very clear. You see, I have run my motor car into a ditch while taking a tour of your beautiful roads hereabouts, and I require some assistance as my motor car has suffered some damage and is stuck firmly in the mud. Do you know someone who can tow my car and fix it? Wow, you got your car admired, mister. You'd be better off this depth headed set of ponies and truck just end up right to slam all right alongside your car. Translation? <laughs> you need a team of horses. Ah, well, you know where I might find a team to hire? Well, in the barn, most likely. That's where I'd look. If you tried to hire them, they probably wouldn't talk to you. Who should I talk to? Well, that'd be me. Ah, sir, I'd appreciate it if you would hitch up your team and tow my car someplace where I could have it fixed. You see, I'm in a real hurry, got some pressing business in Boston, and I gotta be on my way. I'll pay you off your trouble, of course. I had an uncle's in the pressing business. Yeah, Hard cider to be that. Maybe best in hard cider around. But I never did no pressing in Boston, though. I don't know. Maybe Charlie on Apple down here. I don't know. Hard cider, huh? You still do that business? Well, there's no way of knowing whether they do that sort of thing the other side of the grave, but if they ain't got no revenueers in the land of glory, by God, I bet he's still at it. I just passed on. Sorry. Not half as sorry as Aunt Lucy. She's been mad about the old man leaving for 10 years now. Nobody to bell her at. <laughs> now, about my car. <laughs> Did you ever hear the time? <laughs> Pull up the wall. He got the green apple quick steps from over stamping his cider. And he couldn't make it to the outhouse, so he damn near filled up the old lady changed her mind. You could just hitch up your team. Of course, the chamber pot was off limits to the man, right? So he left it right there in the middle of the floor, and she tripped on it. She was mad in the hornet, and he shook right off after him with her walk. And oh, she fell, beat him to shreds, right there, made him bed right down with the hands in the middle of the bed. <laughs> Gentlemen, would you or would you not help me with my car? <laughs> I could just see old wall all covered in head and turned and shivering like a gun china. <laughs> How did you do this to yourself? You really ought to be more careful. Mama called us, didn't she, Henry? Yep, had not better get in there, hadn't we? No, really, I'm I'm alright. Do you 
uh, to just convince those gentlemen to haul my car over the mud, pay them. Did you ask them to do that for you? I did, but I don't think they hear me. They heard you. They'll do it. Well, why don't they do something now? I'm in a hurry. Well, hold still. This is in Boston. They are not in a hurry, and you can't make them hurry. How'd you know I was from Boston? Last time I saw someone in such a hurry, it was in Boston. Someone so frantic as you. I'm not frantic. So when was a farm girl ever in Boston? I'm not a farm girl. Well, what are you then? I'm a teacher. Huh. Well, I would go to a school where I could look at a teacher like you all day. You couldn't learn what I have to teach by admiring me. I actually don't think you could learn what I have to teach. Why not? Why couldn't I? You're in too much of a hurry. Didn't you learn to be a teacher in Boston where everyone is in a hurry? I studied at Wellesley, but I learned to be a teacher here in Vermont. Wellesley? What are you doing up in the boondocks? You should be in Boston still, or New York. What a time. What, couldn't find a husband? <laughs> I could have found at least a dozen just like you. Well, that I doubt. <laughs> Why are you so special? This used to be a slick suit, sure. You're just like all the others. Well, nah, you wouldn't do for me, though, pretty as you are. Why not? Because you're not in enough of a hurry. Look at you, the Venus is a school marm in a hick town. God, I ain't seen old Ben pull that hard since we pulled Morse's Buckbower down the river there about three, four years ago in the flood of 27. What, have you got loaded in that car besides mud? Not milk, I assure you. <laughs> hey, uh, you don't think that either one of those two horses worked out $10 worth of sweat, do you? I mean, they didn't even sweat $10 worth between the two of them. Can you imagine? Charge me $10. Well, I don't know what the going price for sweat is, but I don't imagine it brings much. There ain't much short supply of sweat around here. Well, what the hell? It's only $10. Easy come, easy go. Hey, you ain't never sweat a piece of gold in your life. Well, I did once, but it's only a dewdrop. Why would you possibly want to sweat? There's plenty of money to be made. This is America. Now, this is Vermont. <laughs> Lord be blessed in by the great horn spoon, Carlton P. Well, the serious Mr. Oswald. <laughs> Henry? We'd best be back to work so we can be good examples for the people from the village. Did you wander up here to be a good example to us, Mr. Oswald, and to take photographs of yourself doing the Lord's work? Or this young fellow right here, he just wandered up here himself. This is Mr. What's your name? You can just call me Winston. Hello, Winston. Black Henry, I bring no sermon. My preaching is lost on such heathens as you. <laughs> as is my photographic art. Mm -hmm. Only I have gone to <coughs> seminary, at least art school. <laughs> Lord, guide me. Heathen or not, Mr. Oswald, I just like to keep it between me and the uh, yeah. If only them churches is warmer. <laughs> Relax, Henry. <laughs> I bring important news from the village. Well, speak then, Oswald. A federal liquor agent is here in town to rid us once and for all from the pernicious influence of drink. He has appropriated Constable Norris Nichols' dining room as his base of operations. He told Mrs. Farnsworth that he's here to capture a certain whiskey runner who ferries the contraband into Boston. I overheard this that he would have captured the criminal, but his assistant ran the car off the road. The car was damaged. You fix cars, don't you? I'll do pretty near anything. As little of it as possible. <laughs> I see you have a, another repair job going already. Well, the modern age is upon us. And, uh, you being a photographer, you know that. And a mighty shame it is. This agent's name is Vincent Comstock. We'll be receiving a visit from him. Good day, Winston. Peace, Henry. May the Lord keep you in the palm of his hand. Not <laughs> <laughs> good to you, Oswald. Well, you better get to fixing the world's heaviest package. Looks 
like we're going to have a pickup in business. Well, should be building fences, but building fences is too much of a picking up oh, business for me. All oh, 10 new wrenches. I like this mechanic work. Did that man say that the agent is staying at Norris Nichols' house? Norris Nichols that lived down the village? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know him? You could say he's a business associate. This is thrilling. Well, I never found Norris that thrilling. I found him snoring a few times out behind the song. <laughs> God, he never looked that thrilled to me. I love a good adventure. <laughs> history because a bunch of church ladies thinks it's a road to hell. And don't we have a right to go to hell? <laughs> Temperance. How do you feel? Drinking's popular. Well, the whiskey business is spread out. And any man with half a brain and a hair of ambition can make a kill. And me, with half a good college education, gotten at my great old dad great sacrifice. And I'm supposed to ignore all this practically free money and quit drinking to boot? How they do dream. And I'm the town constable. <laughs> Best job you can have in my business. No problem getting the arm of the law to turn a blind eye since I'm the eye and the arm of the law. <laughs> But now, this big government dick has come to town. And what a peacock and an ass he is. Them fellas from Boston got to have their whiskey. They're no bunch to fool around with. They're dangerous. And I sort of got a contract with them. Well, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm doing a public service. Doing this town some good. Of course you are, Nichols. You're the only upholder of the law in this town. Until we came, that is. Not a cold, not a I'm Norris. Uh, just a feather in my throat. Well, it'll be a feather in your cap if we catch this whiskey runner. We were so close to catching him. My investigative work had really paid off. But then Arnold ran the car off the road. Sorry about that, sir. Oh, I'll get him. Have you ever studied the maps of the area, Nichols? Uh, Norton, sir. Uh, well, I have lived here all my life. Now, our maps is the chief pillar of investigative work. Mm. Have you studied the maps? Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Good. You'll need a well thought out plan of attack. Perhaps we could use Mr. Nichols' knowledge of the area to our advantage, sir. Thank you, Arnold. You're new at this. You just sit back and watch an old hand. No, studying maps was one of the areas I excelled in while at the academy. What happened to this map? Uh, well, I just spilled some water on it, sir. Norton, he's a government property. You really must be more careful. We're not going to catch him. Hello there. Afternoon, sir. I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't see you uh, busy and all. Quite all right. I was just tidying up. <laughs> I'll be out of your way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very respectful woman now, Nichols. Why didn't you introduce us? Ah, uh, well, she's just a maid. Well, you got her well trained, I see. Though she must have been a bit in awe of me. Probably doesn't see many of my stamp in this town. <laughs> well, you hit the nail on the head there. Where would you like to start with the uh, stakeout, sir? Well, first we need our car fixed. You can't have a stakeout without a car. And the suit, money, needs to be clean. I don't suppose there's anyone in town who takes in laundry? 
I'll, I'll have Mark wash it. Now we're getting somewhere. And uh, you'll need to find someone to fix my car. I uh, must be miles to the nearest garage. Well, the farmer, Carl P., he fixes about anything. I send Oswald to talk to him. Mm. The farmer is going to fix my car. He's also a mechanic. What, he couldn't make his mind up in choosing a career? Oh, no. <laughs> Everybody does everything around here. He's a blacksmith, carpenter, plays fiddle at the barn dances. <laughs> but you're just a constable. Yes. Well, there's so much criminal activity and disruption around here. I have to be three constables at once. I can branch out my chosen profession. Yes. Well, when can this jack of all trades fix my car? Uh, soon, sir. He's got a car in his shed now. He can't move it till it's fixed. As soon as he fixes it, he'll pull your car out of the ditch and fix it for you. Can't move it, eh? Well, we'll just have to have a nice chat with this peace fella. I wouldn't push Carlton if I were you. Rushing him's like pissing in the wind. I appreciate your advice, Norton, but we do things a little differently in the big city. We know how to get things done. Yes. Come on, Arnold. Martha, bring that bottle back in here, would you please, dear? <laughs> Don't please dear me, I'm just the maid. Come on, dear, you know we have to keep up appearances. This town quit caring whether we live in sin or not years ago. We ain't done a lot of sinning lately. <laughs> <laughs> We've been over this, Mark. You can't just live your life any way you want to. Think of my position in the community. Besides, we've got to show these government fools we're legitimate upstanding citizens. We are, for God's sake. Well, not by their standards, we're not. We're unmarried, we're in the damn bootlegging business, and I'm supposed to be the arm of the law in this town. To that Comstock fella, law enforcers are supposed to be a special breed, superior beings, supermen. Well, you handle it. I'm just the maid. <laughs> Martha, I need you now. As always. Well, don't forget you need me, too. What are we going to do? How are we supposed to operate with those fools using our headquarters as a, I mean, our house as their headquarters to catch Winston? Tell them to get their ass off the property. Well, I can't do that. It'd be suspicious. Well, Norris, that Comstock fella is too busy looking at himself to see anything. <laughs> at least we know where they are. Now his assistant, that Arnold fella, he seems pretty swift. We'll have to watch him. I guess you're right. I'd hate to see what happens if we cut off supply of those Boston hoods. Why those revenuers have to show up now? Well, you better get used to it, because you know Carrollton Pease is going to take twice as long fixing that Dick's car once they've had their little discussions this afternoon. <laughs> if we're ever going to get him out of here, I better go jaw a bit with Carlton. See if I can't straighten out the mess Big Shot is sure to make with the pieces. <laughs> yeah, it won't be much conversation, will it? Carlton will butcher Comstock. He won't even need to be even. He won't even know he's been skinned and hung up for aging. <laughs> <laughs> It is beautiful here. Yes, it is. You've slowed down enough to see that. I've got no choice. All the same. Can't wait to be back to the big city. Music. Dancing. <laughs> huh? Parties. Smoky cafes. Sidewalks. You know, I wouldn't stay here if you gave me a million dollars. There's a girl as pretty as you doing wasting her life up here. I don't consider it a waste. I can't take the city. It depresses me. I used to love it, but then I realized how decadent and perverse it all is. The sweatshops and slums, people eating $20 dinners while others paw through the garbage cans for a bone. What are you, a socialist? <laughs> Wesley was too much of a hard life for you, huh? You've had the leisure to think of all that crap, so now you're going to punish yourself for being well off? If I were among the privileged, it doesn't mean that I don't suffer in the long run for this injustice, or that I don't care. We're all in this together. It's not crap, it's people's lives. 
So you're in exile because some people have it and others don't? What a silly thing to worry about. It's always been that way and it always will. You're too serious. Have some fun. Enjoy life. I'm not in exile and I am enjoying life. It's just that I care about people and these hard times are driving them to despair in droves. And I suppose the surf or the tenant farmer had a little paradise. At least they had the land. They were, they are, people of the earth. The land? <laughs> they were slaves. Every kid worth his salt wants to get off the farm. Yeah, I mean, going through some hard times, but we'll be in the money again soon. People never had it as good as they have it now. Maybe it isn't easy on the land, but at least there's some dignity in it. And the rhythms of nature. Not like the slum in a factory town. Uh, did you go and read all that factory girl's poetry when you were at Wellesley? Have you taken time out of your parties long enough to realize there's a depression going on? People are poor and hungry in the city. People have been poor around here for generations, but they seldom go hungry. The land takes care of them. You're hungry, though. I saw the way you looked in my car, and how you asked all those questions about the latest in Boston. You read through my copy of the Globe three times, for God's sake. Talk about wasted youth. Take the world on your shoulders. Come to Boston with me. Drive to Hampton Beach. Get our toes wet in the Atlantic on the way. It'll be grand. I am not wasting my life. And I'm not getting into some big, fancy car to go and be a hedonist with Mr. Good Times. I'm doing the world some good. I like it here. I'm teaching these kids to think for themselves. This is a special place. No big cities. The winter is too long and the soil is too thin. No one wants it, so they left it alone. Look around you. We're surrounded by the beauty that wealth always ruins. Haven't you ever noticed that as long as there's enough food and clothing, the poorest people seem to be the happiest? You know, your face is so hard set, I think it might crack. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, it's a nice place to visit. But I'm not hiding my head and fooling myself. You said we're all in this together, right? Right. So it makes you think you're not part of the big city. Like, just because you can't see a factory from where you're hiding. What do you think sent you to Wellesley and gave you all those fine ideals? Hmm? <laughs> all that city money that makes so many people miserable. What a bunch of baloney. You know, in the factory or on the farm, somebody's got a slave. As long as it ain't us, right? Now, we're too smart. And we sing too well. You want to sing? Let's sing God Bless America. <laughs> well, you seem to be doing all right. You've got a reason to sing God Bless America. You don't want to sing? God Bless America. I don't suppose there's any connection between your extra heavy car and the federal agent that's coming to town. Stand beside her. Oh, there might be. <laughs> A wonderful respect you have for this great country's laws. Hey, it's free enterprise. Mm. Look at this one, Paul. Holy <laughs> Jesus, what's going on out here? Sorry, mister. Oh, God, man, you should watch where you're going. Guess I go off and have cocks there. These clothes are a mess. Well, I don't know if wiping them down with that trout will help any, but I guess it might. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm looking for a man by the name of Pete. Who fixes cars. Does he live around here? Yeah. Know anyone by that name, Bob? Could be. What's he look like? Oh, they don't cuss. Well, I hear. I don't care what the man looks like. I have important government business. And I'm a leader of a mechanic. I was told that one lives around here, and, and I'm in a hurry. Do you know where this Pease lives? Yep. Yeah. Richard, come on! <laughs> I'm in a hurry! Well, I don't know if taking out on the boy's fish is going to help any. I'll go on that. <laughs> damn fish! It's not a damn fish, it's a trout. I caught a mile from the dam. Look, I've had only, <laughs> I've had only amusement I can take. Uh -huh. I'm on government business, I tell you, and I need a mechanic. A mechanic? So the government broke? I don't know what a mechanic can do, boy. I don't think there's any fixing for government. Well, I figured they're already pretty much fixed. You know, I don't need opinions. I need a mechanic. A mechanic without opinion. That'd be nice. Oh, the rare thing, too. Ethan and Alan Keyes. Get rid of them fish poles and get back to your row and are all kind of your backside, but good. Have you been running around with that Willie Nichols again? You've got to finish that lower hay field. If it rains around, they'll be held hay. Yes, Paul. Peas. <laughs> So this is the pizza bar. 
Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, you didn't ask. Can't you see this is important? You're standing in the way of government business. Well, here I was thinking I was just standing in my own barnyard. Well, that's what Locke did for it. Now you got government business in your barnyard. The cow do their business in the barn, and the government does its business in the barnyard. <laughs> Gentlemen, <coughs> we need our car towed out of the ditch and repaired so that we can catch a whiskey bootleg runner that comes through this area. I'll handle this, Arnold. You ought to let him, him handle it. He don't talk like he's on government business. Even I understand you. <laughs> and I don't talk him. I was afraid as I. Look, we have a very important job to do, and we depend on our car to do it. You have to tow the car out of the ditch hereabouts and fix it so that we can get on with enforcing the law. It's that simple. So let me get this straight. Huh? Oh, you depend on your car to do your job for you. And so your car is dependent on me to do a job on it. And we are dependent on you to enforce the law. Something like that. Now, so that means if enforcement of the law depends on him, and he depends on his car, and his car depends on you, and you depend on me to do your chores while he's depending on you to fix his car, but enforcement of the law depends on me doing your chore. And me doing his chore. Oh, oh we're in worse shape than I thought. That's <laughs> enough supper. We better go in. When will you fix my car? Oh, that depends. <laughs> I've hauled sap and hauled sap in these buckets. This is the best sap they've ever seen. That was a peachy idea you had, Willie. We got all today, tonight, and half of tomorrow. We got hand. Well, Ma says we didn't have to come down until noon. Because Scott Pa's got to fix that hay rick and work on Winston's car in the morning. Ma and Henry milking tonight and tomorrow? <coughs> yep. Ma says boys got to have a chance to be boys sometimes. That they do. Oh boy, I got to hand it to you, Billy. That fellow Winston won't notice all this liquor in his car no more until he hits Boston. We got drunk her in shows now tonight. Well, I don't know why we had to fill him with gasoline, though. I think the Reverend's going to notice we took it from the big petrol tank down by the Bible camp. Horse shit! He can't tell how much is on that tank. I don't know why we had to film with gas, though. It's a good trick. Aunt Willie. Willie, you ain't saying much. Yup. If old Winston runs out of gas, he can run his rig in one of them bottles. God bless that snot hole in his car. He's gonna shit one of the nickels. Give me some of that. Right now. Wait. I'm filling up these bottles. He's right. It's gotta be drunk from the bottle. What are you, a bunch of girls? Give me some of that. Back off! Where'd you get them old bottles? I got them from the back of the tool shed. Them are Henry's. You won't give a hoot. We'll give him some liquor. Jesus, you done with that bottle? Give it here. <coughs> God! That's good! Here, give me some. <sighs> old man knows how to brew it. Let's each have a old bottle. He won't need more than one, I guarantee. Come on now and have a nip. Don't this stuff make you sick? I heard you can go blind and get to twitching in the leg. No, you go blind and get twitching in the leg for masturbation. You done that plenty ain't dead yet. Have a drink, you moron. You have to like Byron Barker. I am not. Don't worry, Alec. My old man knows how to brew it, and he tells Martha everything he knows about it. And we've got some milk or hay or weed the garden till noon tomorrow. Of course, you got the whole summer out, don't you, Willie? Must be nice. It ain't all that great. Got most of the cricks around here all fished out. In a pig's eye you do, I'm still catching the lunkers. I get tired of pounding way up and down them old dusty roads. Everyone else is out shoveling shit or pitching hay. I just as soon be back in school. At least then I can look at Miss Payson every day. She has something to look at, ain't she? Something to listen to, too. She says the damnedest things. Why don't you come up and help Alan and me with the hay? my old man ever found out I was doing farm work, he'd hide me good. It says no Nichols has ever done farm work. He figures me to be some sort of doctor or professor. That's when he's sober enough to think, which ain't often. Well, Pa says farm work is as good a profession as any man could have. Even in Vermont, where we grow more rocks than anything else. Didn't he even? That he did. Oh man, when are you gonna have that rig out of there? Oh, about the time I get her text, oh, judgment day, one or the other. 
That hayfield can't wait. It'll take them boys till Judgment Day to finish hand mowing. You and Henry ought to get on it. Well, Carlton's got to get this done here because he's got to get on to doing government work. <laughs> the government ain't going to do our hay in there. Well, I bet they'd do a job of it if they did, though. <laughs> Donna, if I mix enough of these rigs, I make enough money we can buy the hay. And let that hayfield go to hell. Oh, it ain't going to go to hell. We'll get her. We still got that other slap jawed government fellow wants his car fixed, too. I might let him go to hell. <laughs> hey, why don't you let them boys go on up to camp? They need your help down in that field. Neither one of them can sharpen a scythe worth beans. They might as well have a lark while you're tied up. Then it'll set a fire under them when they finally get back at the hand. Besides, they'll fish their supper, and I won't have to feed them. Evening. How do you do, Martha? Oh, if it ain't Martha Atwood. Evening to you, Doria. Henry. Nice one, ain't it? That is. Think it might rain later, though? Well, be a long dry spell if it don't. I, uh, seen your father out and about. Looks fit as a fiddle. It's a wonder, ain't it? <laughs> he's getting long in the tooth. No, oh, he's a mere pop. <laughs> Is Arden still milking up to your folks' place? As far as I know, don't know his arm welcome up there no more. Uh, he's a good boy, Arden. Besides, I ain't had time to go up to the old farm, what with company and all, down to the village, and nor uh, at our house. Uh, oh, that's right. You got the government staying with you. Kind of makes you feel safe, don't it? <laughs> Not too. And that car, his car is still stuck up in that ditch, ain't it? Yep. I bet you won't be sad to see them clowns drive away. <laughs> nope. I think you just find someone to straighten out his problems. Well, I guess that would have to happen for them to move on. Now, that <laughs> prohibition agent there now, he does fluff himself up something terrible, doesn't he? Puts a rooster to shame. <laughs> I'll go north, old enough. Oh, same as always. You hang on a minute. I've got something for you and Norris and Willie. So how's Winston's car coming? Oh, he banged her up pretty good. Them big rocks will do that. This kind of car weren't made for around here, was it? No, oh, not somebody can afford them anyway. Here you go, dear. Fresh bait. I thank you, Doria. Norris and Willie will love it. Well, I better be off. You come back in time. If I can get out, I will. Henry, Carlton. So long, Martha. Thanks again, Doria. Oh, Tain't nothing. <laughs> Behave yourself now. Uh, Henry, can you get me that uh, big mallet from the tool chair there? Wow, I guess I ain't got nothing better to do. I might as well go back and get that mallet. <laughs> hey! Where's my bottles? What's that, Henry? My bottles that I've been saving in the back of the shed in the crate, they're gone. Somebody took them. Oh, come on, Henry. What the hell would someone want with a bunch of old bottles? Well, I don't, I'm sure I don't know, but them bottles are mighty special to me. <clears throat> Damn. Damn, finally a night without Mr. Lawn or his yes man. Martha, get another bottle, would you? Finish what you got. I said get another bottle. Did you hear me? Why, Jesus, you are dumber than a box of rocks. If I'd have known you was going to sit here and get pie-eyed, I would have gone along with them city dicks to the Reverend Oswald's house. I... You just want to flirt with that, aren't you? Ha! Half drunk, I was going to Reverend Oswald's house to socialize. I was if they would have it. It's sooner a half drunk Atwood than a whole drunk Nichols. God damn it! I am a respected citizen. Town constable, slackman, goddamn Reverend be proud to have Nichols at his table. Junk? Undrunk, <laughs> half naked, stirred <laughs> crazy, still by the damn eyes. Settle down. Up and die of a heart attack. I'm just saying that they ought to leave behind their own damn business and let a fellow mind here. What do they have to do with this town? 
Look at those fine smelling dandies they sent the city. Oh, and you're a lot better than that, huh? Getting drunk every night, letting that boy yours go to seed. If it weren't for me, he'd be belly up starving. You don't give a rat's ass for him or me or nothing but guzzle guzzle. <laughs> oh, well, it's guzzle guzzle damn well feeds us out. <laughs> oh, what's that you have there? Lemonade? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, Gossip? I don't slop it down like a hog like you do. I don't wobble around blind and fall down the stairs. Hello, fall down the stairs. To hell you don't. Every one of them cellar stairs has a Norris bruise to its name. <laughs> you don't even know what you've done the next day. Mm. You think the bumps are from me beating on you. Oh, I ought to beat on you. <laughs> Go ahead then. Knock me off my chair. Knock me down. Twouldn't be hard. Go ahead then, I would. Mm -hmm. Bite that hand and meet you. I should have never let you move in. You saved your ass from being an outward spinster in the green sack death. Showed you to read, look out in front of your nose. Go ahead then, knock me down. I should have moved out long ago. My folks' old damn rundown, freezing cold hill farm even beats this. Go then. Who stop? By God, Norris. If you weren't so soaked, you'd realize you couldn't last a week without me. Who'd run the selectman business? Wash your clothes, keep your house, feed your son. Uh, who'd run the still, buy the corn, tend the garden, mow the fields, handle that Anthony and his pack of hoodlum boys? I would, I would. Who'd write the Christmas cards, pay the bills? Who keep your goddamn respectability? I would, I would, I would. <laughs> yes, you would. You weren't three sheets to the wind all the time. I'm not drunk. Morris. It was a perfectly okay accident. I'm not drunk. There's not Norris. Mark, do you love me? Oh, God, don't start, Norris. <laughs> Just answer me, do you love me? Norris, <laughs> the truth. I love you, Norris. Sort of. <laughs> I know I used to, anyways. Sort of. Norris, don't start this, please. We don't have to go the whole round tonight. Because we don't speak yet. Oh, anymore. God. I can fix it. Come on. I can give you what you Norris, want. get up. Come on, come on, I can give you what you want. Get that rooster out of Martha and Norse's henhouse. 
I imagine old Norris is some upset with that whiskey still right there in his basement. And that revenue agent can't try it out in his parlor. You suppose he notices he's got a problem? He ain't always so good at noticing when he's got problems. Yeah, well, maybe not. Besides, he's got that act with taking care of him. She'd probably run them revenues right off the property with a shotgun. And it wasn't for Norris being a select man and a pillar of the community and all. Did you see that government fellow's guy? It's a package just exactly yeah. like this one. Stuck right in the muck. Now, I don't imagine it's as heavy as this one, being as it ain't full of Norris's hoop. <laughs> but I imagine to make old Ben heave some getting her out, though. Well, we better fix this one before we get that one. Well, let's get at her before she gets dark. Ooh. I'm going to need your help on me here for a second, Henry. Well, do I get a mechanic's wages? Well, you can have a second to supper. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. You're lucky I guess. whiskey to Boston before he gets upset. I can't believe that revenue is not breathing down my neck. Oh, what a sweet thing that Phoebe is. I can almost stay here with her. It's lovely down by the river. Hell, I wouldn't last three days. I gotta move. Someone who's fast at fixing cars. Uh, well, you ain't going to need a car at the circus. You'll be dancing and riding bicycles with the bears. Or an elephant. Uh, the circus I work for requires that you have an automobile, a fast one. Hmm. Yeah, well, do, would you trust an automobile with an elephant with an automobile? Uh, or a ring master. And the circus I work for is not a cheap circus to run. I bet seats cost a third of a dollar. Yeah, or they could cost you your life, but the refreshments are good. I think I'd have to pass on that show. Yeah, I think I'll take my refreshments at home. Yeah, that could be arranged. Here for a drink, gentlemen? Well, I guess not. If you fellas go ahead, I won't turn you in. Mm. You can imagine my relief. <laughs> By select men constables, ain't that right? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, if my car were fixed, I could get you some fine stuff from Boston when I come back from more of this local fare. Yeah, and the next time you put your rig in the ditch, I'd be too damn drunk to fix it. <laughs> you don't need my help to get drunk. Norris must spread a little of the stuff around locally. I ran into a guy down by the river, he must have had a gallon or so. What? He, had a, he had a cowboy hat on and talks funny. Well, you know, Norris, he don't spread the liquor around quite like he used to since he started exporting it. it some of it gets around, it bond dances and such, but a lot of your drinkers around here are soldier drinkers when they're drinking. Yeah. But that young fella that you saw the cowboy hat on, he weren't drunk. Well, must have been crazy then. He was talking crazy. He's odd. Odd. <laughs> odd. <laughs> that fella in the cowboy hat that you saw, that's Byron Barker, and that's old Oswald's nephew. He started telling me about a horse he had that could count to ten. Oh, well, Byron got a story or two, but I don't believe the Barkers even got a horse, much less one that could count even to two. <laughs> Barkers wouldn't know how to keep a horse if they had one. Yeah, I think uh, old uh, Oswald there and the Byron is all that's left, and uh, Oswald, he figures he's uh, responsible to take care of his nephew. Well, looked like he was taking care of himself. Not doing such a great job. Well, now the whole village takes care of him a little bit. Now, you see, Byron won't never stay home at all Oswald's, and it gets the old man kind of hot. 
He's always running around after Byron trying to get him to stay home for his own good. Well, I don't think Byron agrees with that. He prefers to be kept by the town and himself. He, he don't like that room over there at Oswald's. No, he sleeps up to the ledges in the summertime and uh, in the cellar at the Grange come winter. Well, seems likable enough. You know, I went to a state hospital once in uh -huh. New Hampshire where they kept the crazy ones. Uh -huh. You didn't seem the least bit like the patients there. Well, Byron is his own man. I mean, he ain't got no hospital taking care of him. Oh, that's obvious. Well, we're all a bit odd and getting odder. Uh, you sure you want to have some, Henry? Nope. I'm odd enough. Uh, suit yourself. So, how's the uh, repair job going? Hmm? Well, it's not going anywhere by itself. It's going to help the mom. <laughs> How much longer will it take to get around to fixing it? You've been trying to get around fixing it all along. No, ain't that the truth? <laughs> will it be much longer? Uh, no, it's going to be about the same length. No, I'd say you <laughs> might even shorten it up a little bit. I don't care. How long it is? Well, I thought by the way you were talking, you was in a hurry. <sighs> Can I spend the night in your barn again? Uh, what do you think, Henry? Oh, I don't know. You don't look like he eats that much hay, really. Oh, I don't know there, young man, but it uh, seems like it might be time you're heading down the road. What? You don't want me to stay in your farm? Well, can I take this road to an inn or something? Oh, they don't need it. they got plenty of roads down the village. <laughs> <laughs> How far is it to a tavern or something? Over to Bradford. How long will it take you to get there? Well, how fast are you going to drive? Oh, God, this. Did you say drive? Yeah. Drive my car? Well, you ain't taking the wagon. Ben don't like night travel. Well, hot dog. How much do I owe you? Well, how much is it worth to you there, young fellow? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Tell me how much it's cost me. Well, what'd you pay for that rig then? Well, the car's not even mine. I don't know. It must have been four or five thousand dollars. Belongs to my employer. Well, it didn't run no four or five thousand worth when we drug it up here, did it, Henry? No, it didn't go at all. It went worth the plug and It well, goes down, though, don't it? Yes, it does. Four or five thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not giving you four or five thousand dollars. You just said you didn't know anything about it. Well, I know it's not worth four or five thousand dollars. Well, you just told him that that's what your boss paid for it, four or five thousand dollars. Yeah, but that was new. You just worked on it. You didn't do four or five thousand dollars worth of work to it. Well, you don't know what I did to it. <laughs> I did rub before. It wasn't worth a nickel. <laughs> now you can sell her off for four or five thousand and you don't even own it. And that's a tiny profit. And besides, you got to sleep in the back. But, but it only took you a day. Well, it only took you a minute to run it in the ditch. And you ain't got nothing into it at all. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> all right. How much, how much is your time worth? Well, no, that depends upon <laughs> what time you would be interested in borrowing. Now, uh, if I was in bed with the old lady and she was feeling good, well, now that would cost you. <laughs> but if uh, you were thinking about the time when all my bills come due or when I'm working the roof on the barn, well, that would be a lot cheaper. OK. Uh, how much is your time under the car work? Well, it was nothing to me. Uh, I know how to fix the tie rod. I'd, I'd rather be hating. Worth something to me. Huh? Well, I guess we're back at the beginning, ain't we? <laughs> 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 we've come full circle again. Okay. So how much is it worth to you? Ten dollars. Huh. We're going to make a businessman out of him yet, Henry. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> what a way to do business. Well, you could have went down and done my hand. It's saved to $15. That's what I've done. Yeah, well, I'm not in that business. Well, I'm in the milking business in the morning, so I guess I better turn in. Good night, Captain. Yeah. Good night, young fellow. I'm with uh, Henry. You ain't going with me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right there. Mr. Keys, would you send Phoebe out to say goodbye? I think I'll be off. Well, I'll tell her you're going. I'll leave it up to her to decide if she's going to come see you all. We'll see you later there, young fella. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Pease. Probably will be seeing me around.
Not too damn soon, I hope. <laughs> I'm not sure I could survive another negotiation with you farm folks. <laughs> yeah, that Henry can get on your nerves, can't he? <laughs> Good night. God, what old hellraiser those two are. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Oh, nothing. Just this place. You thought about this place again? You nearly ripped all the leaves off the lilac bush this afternoon with your nervous boredom. No pool halls, no speakeasies, no radio, no movie houses. I thought you were going to have a mental breakdown. No, the walk down by the river calmed me down. Yeah, I guess I was just feeling a little anxious. I uh, used to be on the move day and night. Carlton said you were leaving. Do you really think you should travel at night? It's dangerous. It's the only time to travel. The faster the better. Oh, that's irresponsible. And you're drinking. So I am. Do you care for some? Well. It's the finest Vermont blend. Besides maple syrup, of course. <laughs> you're such a bad man. Oh. Look at you, drinking. Oh. It's not only irresponsible, it's illegal. This is a citizen's arrest. You're coming downtown with me, lady. I can't be, you brute. Here, have a drink and forget all about it. Well, right again. I'm easily bought. That's the truth. Not another argument. I just think you're fooling yourself and wasting your time as a hoodlum. You're very intelligent and articulate. You could do something really good. Look here, sister. Who you calling a hood? I'll plug you right here. Winston, be serious. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, you're such a child. No, wait. Come on. I'll be serious. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, right. You know, it helps me to be serious when um, we dance. No, Winston, I don't want to dance. Oh, well, what's the matter with you? Have you been drinking again? We need music. Let's sing. All of me. <laughs> Why not take all of me? me? That's what it's done to do best. You're dangerous. Right. I'm dangerous. <laughs> Can't you see? I'm no good without you. <laughs> take these lips. I want to Why do you have to leave? Why don't you come with me? I'm going back in the city anyway. I left that behind. This is my home now. This is where I want to be. It would be nice if you could be here too, without destroying the lilac bushes. Phoebe, I gotta go. I gotta get back to my life of sin. When will you be back? You are coming back, aren't you? Yeah, this is my route. That liquoration doesn't scare me. I don't rent him once. I'll do it again. Only this time, I won't run off the road. So, running off the road, I met you. Winston, please be careful. Evie, are you sure you won't come with me? You're that school to teach now in the summer. I have chores. I live here now. It's part of my rent. Besides, I don't want to go to Boston. What are you afraid of? Are you running from the mob? I'm not afraid. It's just that. Never mind. It's not on you. I'm sorry. I just have to be here. Until we meet again. Be careful. Uh, come back for the square dance at Richardson Farm. Square dances are a lot of fun. Come with me. I'll show you some fun. I really like you, Winston. Goodbye. I like you too, Phoebe. Until we meet again. <laughs> Morning, Allie. Henry, thought she was milking. Boy, you do look terrible. Oh, Henry, I think I'm gonna die. Well, I think you already did, and you just ain't noticed. <laughs> Them yeah. fellas are dead for sure. Henry, are you gonna tell Ma? You ain't gonna tell Ma, are you? Now, Alan, put your britches on. I ain't standing to a man standing there in his under drawer, shivering like a gun-shy dog. Where'd you put your shirt? I didn't mean to get drunk or steal that liquor. I told them boys 
Then where are your bottles? So why'd you sleep on the cold, cold ground in your under drawers? I, I, I think it's coming back to me. <laughs> I think Willie and Ethan, they got me to believe in we was camped down by the river, down by the falls. And it was pitch dark, and the stars was blazing. And I was standing on a rock, sure than hell I was on the riverbank. And Willie hollered, dive! And so I stripped down and I dove and I think I passed right out. Oh, I feel like shit! All right, now, now, hold it. You'll have that. Now, sit down you call them, little boy. I, I told them boys that we were your bottle, Hank. Yeah, what did you say? How come you ain't milking? Well, I left this morning to milk into your folks. I come up here after these. Never thought I'd see them full of whiskey again. I ain't never seen you miss milking. Them bottles must be awful dear to you, Henry. Well, I just want to keep track of them, find out where they were. We was going to put them in sap buckets, but Willie said we needed bottles for moonshine. Well, the boy's right, and he ought to know. Hey, no mind, Alan. But you come up all this way after them. How come them bottles are so dear to you, Henry? Well, I'll tell you, I dug every one of them bottles out of the old overgrown garbage heap up by the old man's farm. Yeah, my father bought and collected every one of these bottles, and it ain't the first time they've had whiskey in them. It's like there's a drunk genie in every bottle. <laughs> genie? Uh. You believe in all them old wives' tales? Well, this is more of a tale of a husband. My mother's husband. My father, to be exact. You know, it was his life that got sucked into these bottles. He's the genie, the drunk genie. And my mother, she could not live with him, so she made an early exit. Your mama died when he was young, and didn't she? Well, my mama checked out to save the old man the trouble of doing it. He was a terrible, raging drunk. He beat all of us. Hell of a hunter and fisherman, though. We, we took it rough in them days. He beat us boys nearly every day. It was hard. Work, sleep, take a beating. Well, I'm glad the old man don't beat me. Willie has to take a licking from old Norris when Norris ain't too drunk to thrash him. Come to think of it. Mom might kill all of us if she found out we was up here drinking. Please don't tell Henry we'll return all your unsmashed bottles back. Where everything went when the house burned. Plows and rakes all gone to hell. Livestock all sold off. There ain't much to take with me. They're pretty. Never thought I'd see them full of moonshine again. Well, we wouldn't have took them if we'd known they were so special to you, Henry. Well, Alan, never mind about the bottles. But you young bucks, you stole that liquor from that whiskey runner named Winston. Now Winston, when he heads back to Boston, he's gonna be heading into a bee's nest if he shows up empty-handed. Now them fellas that give him a job hauling Norris's hooch, they are not the Salvation Army. They've been in this town and I don't like to look a violent bunch. And besides, we got revenuers poking around, driving Norris and Martha mad. Say, what, what did you do with what with the old bottles, when, or the bottles when you poured the whiskey into these, did you fill them with water? What'd you do with them? That's the worst of it, Henry. You know that big petrol tank down by the Bible camp? Them bottles are filled with gasoline. No. Yes, Henry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure hope old Winston don't smoke too many cigars. Okay, see ya, Henry. Thanks for not telling Ma. We'll give all your bottles back. Ethan! Get up, Ethan! What the hell? Ethan! We gotta get that liquor back into Winston's car! What are you talking about? Ethan, we gotta! And we gotta get the auto switch back! Ow, you so drunk! Why don't you go take a dive into the river again? Ha ha ha! must have passed out too close to the fire! Holy water, hot foot! Ah, shit! What the hell? You burnt the boot rag your foot there, smart ass! Oh, smoke toes! <laughs> we gotta get the model switch back, fellas. Are you sure that all the liquor that this fellow's running out of state comes from that still at the bottom of the hill? It's got to be the still that this guy runs the stuff from. And I don't want to just bust up any bootleg operation. I want the guy we were chasing when that animal jumped in front of us and we run off the road. Understood, sir. Uh, Oswald. I may need to use your phone later. They might be missing me in Boston. Any time, Mr. Comstock. Now, if I catch this guy, they might take me a little seriously in Boston. They might put me in charge of the Massachusetts district. 
we raid this operation, they might decide that I'm their man for Massachusetts. You know, maybe we could take you could, I could take you with us, Norris. With your law enforcement <clears throat> and experience, I could show you some real investigative work down there, some real law enforcement. Oh, I think you've shown me some real law enforcement right here. Oh, that's nothing. But you're sure that the shack is a still, huh? Doesn't look like any still I've ever seen. Some of the trees far enough, but how do they distill the liquor in that big flat pan and where are the buckets for? <laughs> oh, that's a still, all right, sir. Yeah. See, they start with good hard cider. You heard of that? Yeah. Well, they fill the tank on the side of the building full of apples and let them go hard. Yeah. And there's a hose that runs from the tank and drains into a big pan. And they boil her off. The steam rises and the alcohol falls back. <laughs> and then they tap her off with them buckets and fill them bottles with that funnel. I read about all this stuff in a magazine article. <laughs> well, you've done your homework. You have a smart woman in your employ, Norris. She'd make a good informant. Oh, she's smart, all right. Don't always act too smart. All right. I think she's got a handle on this situation, Norris. Indeed she does. You've reassured me, Miss Atwood. I'm glad I sent her up to stake the place out. Looks like they've abandoned the operation, though. Temporarily, perhaps. I've got an eye for these sort of things. Something told me that no one had stepped through the door of that shack for some time. Perhaps the presence of federal agents in town drove them into hiding. Looks like you scared the bootleggers and the drinkers away, too. Probably do them some good. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> Don't know as I've scared all the drinkers off, though. I saw a young fellow down by the sawmill today, uh, sort of uh, seemed unsteady. He was thrashing about and seemed a little tipsy. Uh, had a cowboy hat on. Oh, dear. I think you may have seen my poor suffering nephew, Byron. Your nephew is a drunkard, Oswald. Yeah, heavens no. You see, sir, he's mentally retarded. An idiot. Well, I don't know is he so much an idiot. Or mentally retarded. Well, well yes, he is. Dr. Sorterflatty told me he's mentally retarded. <laughs> well, well, anyone can see he's not normal. He could never learn in school. He acts funny. And he won't do a thing you tell him to do. Even his mother does. Well, can something be done for him? Can't you find him some medical help or some professional help? If the Lord is my witness, sir. I try my best to do my duty by him since his father died. I offer him food and a roof over his head and my humble version of the Lord's teaching. I, I did take him to the Brattleboro retreat once. I had him in the back seat of my car. He started screaming and thrashing about the minute we left town. It quite rattled my nerves. We stopped for petrol and he ran away. I found his way back here somehow. Maybe he ain't so retarded after all. <laughs> well, yes, he is. And a bit crazy. Lord, save his soul. Well, perhaps you could save him, Norris. You could arrest him for disturbing the peace and then get him to professional help. Well, he don't really disturb the peace. People don't get me too nervous by him around here. They kind of take it to him. He goes off with some wild stories. Yes, but he could be a danger to himself. Norris, you should arrest him. Vincent may be right, Norris. Of course I'm right. I'm in the business of protecting people from themselves. Do you realize what liquor has done to this country? And loose morals and gambling? Why, your average fellow has to be watched closely or he stumbles and falls when he meets temptation. And think of the trouble a half it could cause, even in a town like this. And besides, you don't want people talking, Norris. It's bad for your reputation. A sworn officer of the law, even a constable, must be beyond reproach. He must protect his community. Even as a minister protects his flock. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, I'm so busy on this bootleg. And it's such a pleasure watching a big city professional. Mm -hmm. Well, don't sell yourself short, Nichols. You have excellent judgment. Shame about your falling down, huh? In pursuit of that potential witness. Is your nose better? 
You know, I think taking a blow to the face in pursuit of justice shows real dedication. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's dedicated, all right. <laughs> I've taken a few spills. That's no lie. And we all take spills. Sometimes you come out smelling like a rose, though. Well, I suppose I ought to go do my rounds in the village. Uh, Martha, did you wash my coat, the coat that I need? to do my rounds, Martha, did you wash my coat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gonna do some rounds, huh? See if you can't get yourself to smelling like a rose. That's right. <laughs> well, then you better get down there and get your coat. It's ready. Well, thank you, Martha. Just doing my duty, sir. <laughs> I noticed smoke coming from the chimney this morning. Isn't July a bit warm for a fire? Oh, well, you see, sir, we, uh, we boil down the sap to make maple syrup down cellar. Sorry, do I need the fire to do my washing? Uh, uh, maple syrup in July. Uh, uh, a late run. Ooh, yeah. Damn good sugar in this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to have to try some of that maple syrup sometime. I'll put some on your pancakes. That will be good. Well, I'd best be off. <coughs> Martha. Mm -hmm. So. Brown agent Comstock's pancakes and too much syrup. I'll do my best, Oswald. Well, good night, Mr. Barker. Maybe by the use your telephone later, I may have to make a very important call to Boston. Any time, Mr. Comstock. Leave it, Oswald. I'll show you how. I have to go do my rounds in the village. Take it flat. I don't even put maple syrup in. How's that? I don't put maple syrup in my coffee. I wouldn't imagine you would. I am fond of a maple sugar house, though. Thought I love know. watching them all night long. Thought you were staking out a whiskey still. You know there's no still up there. That's a maple sugar house. You're ribbing me. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I thought it was kind of strange for a moonshine still. I was sitting up there at first, really upset because Comstock made me go up there by myself and I was gonna have to be up there all night long. Then the sunset, it was so beautiful, it calmed me right down. I saw that little house, the air silhouetted against the sky and the mountains. And I remember a book I had when I was a kid that had a picture of a house like that and some men carrying buckets through the snow. That's a damn maple syrup house, I thought. Not a still. <laughs> yeah, you pulled the wool over our eyes. We've been had. You planning on wising up your boss on this? To hell with Comstock. <laughs> I didn't see the point of staking the place out. Yeah, I think his whole approach to catching this bootlegger is wrong-headed. He doesn't listen to me anyway. If I get ideas or take the initiative, he says, I'll handle this, Arnold, you just watch. If I dig up critical evidence, he takes credit for it. He's always sucking up to his superiors, and the only thing he cares about is cutting a good image and impressing other people. So you ain't gonna tell him it's a sugar house? Why should I? Now, I take care of my affairs. I do my job. I'm not gonna do his job. He doesn't appreciate me anyway. So why should I help him? He's still asleep, isn't he? Yep, snoring away. You're pretty hot then, having to stay up there all night. Well, actually, it was kind of nice. Yeah, the stars were 
so beautiful. Saw some shooting stars. Yeah, it was just a summer breeze and so peaceful there, listening to the peepers and watching bats go for bugs and thinking about everything. It's like when I was a kid back in Maryland, laying under the stars, just dreaming. I'm tired, but I, I feel calm. I don't know. I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> this coffee tastes great. How the hell did a sensitive sort like you become a federal agent? Well, I don't really know. I suppose I did it to stay out of the army. My father was a career military man, fought in the Great War as a captain. He wanted his son to follow in the tradition. Why didn't you go along with the plan? Well, I almost did when I was younger. I just got tired of opposing him. Went down to the recruiter's office, and I just couldn't sign those papers. I just froze up. I had no interest in war. I couldn't go into the Army, so I moved to Washington, D.C. A friend of mine had a job there with the IRS. You ran to Washington, D.C. to get away from the Army? <laughs> yeah, well, when enforcement of prohibition began, this, my friend got me this job. It was a, a compromise. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was a salesman back in Maryland when I first graduated university. I don't mind traveling, arresting a bootlegger now and then, but on the whole, it's a stupid idea. Yeah. Now, it's, uh, it just doesn't work. I, I, it's just not a very good job. Why don't you quit? What would I do then? It seems like you don't like what you're doing so well. Well, it seems kind of silly to me. My father drinks on the sly. Half his friends do. The Department of Justice, the Department of IRS, State Department, everybody in government drinks. Prohibition just doesn't work. Yeah, this country just flat out refuses to be saved from itself. <laughs> Why do you stay in this line of work? Tell your boss, Mr. Comstock, to go to hell. <laughs> I wish I could just move into that sugar house up there. It's just so damn nice around here. <laughs> you sure would think it was nice living in a sugar house come January. <laughs> You wouldn't like it so well around here then. Yeah. There's some things I like about the job. Yeah, I like traveling around, staying at hotels, driving cars, shooting guns. I love guns. You ain't interested in war, but you love guns. Yeah, I always liked guns. My father had a bunch of them lying around. He used to clean them, shoot skeet, hunt squirrels and deer. I got me a gun. Like it. My father gave it to me. I've dropped a buck or two, but never been to camp with the men, because being a girl and all. It's a Winchester model 943030. Want to see it? You ain't really shot a deer with it. To hell I ain't. When I was a kid, we about lived on venison. My mother's a better hunter than my father to this day. She's got a dead eye and knows where to find out. I cook you up fresh venison any day you ask, but for Norris is the constable and frowns on Jack and Deer. <laughs> Want to see the 30-30? 30-30. Yeah. Model 24. Mm -hmm. That's a lever action, right? Yeah, that's... <laughs> a woman who's not a gangster's girlfriend or a whore, she's got a gun and she shoots deer. Now that's a new one on me. Ooh. Keep her in the pantry. Got her oiled up good. Grr, that's a real nice one. Keep her real well. <laughs> you want to see my gun? <laughs> it's a 38. Good for one thing only. Would you shoot a man with it? I don't know, and I hope never to find out. Chasing bootleggers and all. Well, it's not like the movies. It's not a shootout every day. Besides, I haven't been at it that long. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. I have been in this line of work. I might not be able to avoid shooting a person with it, though. Thinking maybe you're going to shoot your boss with it? <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> All right, Tom Scott. You're a dead man. Oh, oh, dead man. 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 Oh, dead man.
you. It's a mistake. I've always treated you right. Is this what I get for repayment? Are you mad about something? No, I'm not mad. No, you don't have a new nightstick once again until we get our car back. No, are you? Please don't shoot. Don't shoot me, mom! I had no intention of shooting you. I never did, sir. I'm sorry, it's a mistake. It's the truth, sir. He was just showing me his gun. Damn it! Be more careful, you blundering idiot. You know, many are not cut out to be a federal agent. You're dangerous, you fool. This is going in my report. What in the jump of the Jesus is going on down here? Someone shot a hole clean through my best head! <laughs> 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 I told you to quit leaving it on the floor. <laughs> well, that's no reason to shoot a hole in it from the dining room. You're dangerous. You're a wild animal. All you animals is crazy. I'll never understand that woman. Trouble. Winston, what's the matter? I was driving toward Boston, got as far as New Hampshire. You know, at first I was really excited, you know, behind the wheel again, on my way. But then I started to regret leaving. I don't know why, I just had a really good time here. And you know, it was dark in the car, and the speedo light was glowing. And I, just, I just kept thinking about you. Really? So I decided to pull over at a rest stop and fill up my flask. Well, I was going to get the bottle out of the trunk, and as I'm filling up my flask, I can smell gasoline. So I look under the car to see if there's a leak in the gas tank or something, and then I realize that the whiskey in the goddamn bottles in my trunk has been switched for gasoline. I've had it. I'm already three days late with this load. Tony's going to kill me. I mean, really kill me. Or if I'm lucky, he'll just break all of my teeth. But for this, I'm pretty sure he'll kill me. I have Boy Scouts, you know. Why don't you just call and explain? Explain that I have a trunk full of gasoline. <laughs> you don't understand. See what happens when you're involved in this sort of business? Please, Phoebe, I don't need moralizing now. I'm sorry. If all this happened last night, where have you been all day? When well, parked the Packard in the woods, I gotta find out who took my whiskey. Tony's whiskey. Carlton and Henry wouldn't do that, would they? Not a chance. They're both so honest. I think so. How can I be sure? So I waited until dark to talk to you. I gotta find out who took that whiskey. I don't want them to know I'm back. So I could snoop around and try to find out who stole that load of moonshine. How'd you know I didn't steal it? Or that I wouldn't turn you into the revenue? Because. Now you've gone too far. You just came back for your whiskey. 
all this about missing me is just a story you're telling to soften me up. You're such a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was glad to be coming back here, but not so cheerful about the fact that I could end up in an early grave if I don't straighten out this mess. Now, who could have stolen that whiskey out of my trunk? Oh my gosh! I just thought of something. Ethan and Alan and Willie Nichols have been camped up at the Peace Deer Camp since the night before you left. That's it. They must have taken your Tony's whiskey. Where's the camp? Now, Winston, you can't hurt them. They're kids. I don't want to hurt them. I just want Tony's whiskey back. So where's the camp? I could show you, because you'll never find it by yourself. But I'm not allowed to go to camp. That's the exclusive province of men to go to camp. Besides, I'd have to be crazy to go into the woods with you. I barely know you, and you're clearly a maniac. Oh, come on, Rapunzel, let down your hair. This is serious business. I'm no Rapunzel. I don't need to rescue you. Yes, you do, and I'm the fair prince who will do it. I'll show you this time, because you need to get out of danger. But I expect you to be a gentleman. Yeah, sure, toots. What's to be serious? I'll go get a sweater in case it gets cold up there. Better get a blanket. This isn't a picnic. We won't need a blanket. I'll meet you across the road. Go this way around the front of the house or you'll get hung up on the fence. Henry's bottles. It's what's in them that's worth something. There's tires of land of trout. <laughs> Hot foot Willie! Don't stress me. Look who's doing all the bellowing. We gotta get this liquor switch back, fellas. Give her the mud load of liquor. Just to save some city fella from getting killed. It's not just about that, boys. We gotta give back Henry's bottles. Boys! Boys, the bottles are gone! The guys, the bottles are not in that car! Shh! I must have noticed more filled with whiskey and got rid of them. Look, the wheels are back on it. Oh, your old man must have fixed it. <sighs> what about Henry's bottles? To hell with Henry's bottles. It ain't worth getting shot over. Look, you must throw these bottles back in the trunk of that car and get the hell back to camp before Winston or some of them Boston mugs finds out. <sighs> They've got to know by now that the whiskey is not in that car. I ain't scared no Winston, no Boston mugs neither. Look here, big man. Let's just put these bottles back in the trunk of that car, and we can go steal a bottle or two from the basement of my old man. Now that Willie's a thinking man. <laughs> now wait a second, fellas. I promised Henry we'd get his bottle back. Ain't just gonna let him go. They're important to Henry. His old man drunk some of them before he took to pounding them. Them and Henry got sentimental values. Stop it, lover! Winston sure is going to bring these balls back from Boston to be refilled. Do you think them bottles will make it back from Boston? Willie? Do you think they'll show up again? I hope so, for Henry's sake. Look at those boys drag cases of bottles of whiskey all the way to the top of that damn hill. If they did, I right, they hit the now. We walked all the way up there. Where the hell they go? I don't know, but who else could have taken the liquor out of those bottles and put gasoline in them? It had to have been those boys. Feet are killing me. Uh -huh. Look at the poor little tough guy with sore feet and sand in his shoes. Hey, watch it. Got my pride, you know. <laughs> are you positive that Carlton and Henry didn't take that whiskey? Not a chance. They're both honest to a fault. Besides, doesn't filling those bottles with gasoline seem like a prank by teenage boys? Well, all I know is I've got about eight more hours until it's open season on Winston Thomas. Tony or one of his henchmen will be headed out of Boston any minute. Guns, knives, ropes, and a big tub for the blood. Dead man. Ugh, I'm starting to smell dead. Stop it, Winston. You're scaring me. 
pizza's not that bad. No, you're scaring me with all this talk of dying. We just have to find those boys and get the whiskey back, and those thugs will be satisfied. I've got to hide fast. Sometimes the best place to hide is right out of the open. Let's get you out of these uh, fine city clothes and into some of Carlton's overalls. You're already dirty enough to pass for the farmer. Huh, maybe too dirty. Oh, stop it, beast! <laughs> Ethan! Alan! Where the hell are those boys go? <laughs> I'm going to tan some backside when I find them. They let the afternoon off and they best be out paying or I'm going to know why. Well, Carl, you know, boys will be boys. I mean, they'll turn up. I'm not going to tan their backside. Uh, Henry, you know me better than I know myself. Well, you know, Carl, I make mean, study of people. Uh, yeah, so, for example, <laughs> this fellow right here. Now, I could have sworn he was a slick looking city man, and now look, he's a farmhand just like me. Yeah, I wish I was you right now, Henry. I'm in some real hot water. Henry hasn't been in any hot water since. <laughs> <laughs> Nor cold, neither. Mr. Pease, I think what Winston is trying to say is. Things could get dangerous around here. Well, it's never been too safe. Well, what with winter logging and the wrath of my lovely wife, Doria. <laughs> yeah, not too safe at all around that woman. Might be a good thing we got to our hand. Yeah. Be a good thing, too, if we could find them boys. Yeah. Yeah, it would. You know where they are? No, oh, we come down to the house from our hand to try to find them and get them down to load while we're mowing. Mm -hmm. What do you want with them? Mm, it's complicated. Give it a rest. An arrest is just what we'll make, young lady. If we can ever get our car fixed, let's get to making hay before we gotta listen to this boar hog and holler about his car. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of talk here about with regards to an impending arrest of criminals for violating the Volstead Act. But look here, young man, where is your employer? Well, I hope my boss ain't here yet, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> I see our car, which is federal property, is still in the shed unrepaired. <coughs> I'd like to talk to the farmer in charge who's supposed to be fixing the car. Where is he? I don't have a lot of time here. I'm on urgent federal business. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, well, Mr. Pease, uh, Farmer Pease, has uh, gone after a part. I think he, uh, I think he needs to find a uh, sidewinder shaft for your Packard, which I must say is a very fine car, sir. Yes, it is. Very fast. Mm -hmm. A sidewinder shaft, you say? Uh, what's that sidewinder shaft he was going after, wasn't it? Or was it a pearl tree pinion here? I think it was a pearl tree thingy. No matter. When will our car be fixed is what we want to know. Arnold, I'll handle this. When will our car be fixed? Well, I think that depends on the availability of uh, pearl tree pinion here. <laughs> sidewinder shafts. Right, honey? Right. Honey. It's a good thing, young lady, because we've been on the trail of a very dangerous bootleg runner in the area for some weeks now, and we're very close to making a big arrest. Uh, dangerous criminal, huh? And a very handsome fellow, too, I suppose? I uh, handsome? I guess so. I never had a close look at him. Have you seen anything suspicious? I'll handle this, Arnold. I'll question the witness. Have you seen anything suspicious? <laughs> He's really not that handsome. Oh, who's Is not he? handsome? The, the criminal? The, the bootleg runner? Have you seen him? He drives a car just like ours. Please, Arnold! Have you seen him? He drives a car just like ours. <laughs> I think I know where his still is. His whole operation. It's disguised as a sawmill. But just stake the place out, he's bound to make his move. Uh, we had our car, we could drive down there and arrest him. So, this bootleg runner, he has a still too. He makes the stuff, too. Oh, yes. Everyone knows the stuff is made in the building down on the river that looks like a sawmill. But if you just barge in, he'll get away. He's got lookouts and hiding places for his liquor. He's very careful and very, very clever. I'm not sure he's really that clever. This could be big. This could be worth a promotion for me. Arnold, I think we might want to call in reinforcements from the district office on this. Maybe we should go back down to town and telephone in some agents from Boston. Uh, let's just check it out, this, uh, this sawmill operation, before we call in the cavalry. Oh, I have a feeling on this, Arnold. This could be big. I have a feeling this could be bad for the bootlegs, Ryan. Yes, don't you think so? Charming young lady. Uh, I don't know. He's a pretty smart bootleg runner. <laughs> and believe me, She's not that charming. And the bootleg runner is really not that smart. 
Perhaps we should use some caution and get some more information on this operation. Arnold, don't you worry too much. Come on, let's go back down to town to make that call. I'll get the credit for this, and it will make my career. <laughs> Are you nuts? They might have recognized you. Do you want to be arrested and then killed by mobsters? Well, the way I think it, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think that being arrested might be a good option. At least I'd have some short-term protection in the lockup. Besides, that fool's never seen me in overalls. All he's ever seen is the back of my head as I outraced him in the Packard. You can't go to jail. What about me? Oh, she cares for the criminal? Don't worry, sweetheart. I'll get out of this yet. <laughs> oh, don't you sweetheart me. Um, you need to get out of this mess and never get into another one like it. I don't want to see you killed or arrested. We have to find those boys and get that liquor back and get you back to Boston with this, your last load of liquor. Hey, wait a minute there, honey bunch. Huh. Let's just say that if I get out of this alive and a free man, this will be my last load. Do you want to be with me? Well, sure. Then this is your last load. <laughs> Why did you send them down to the sauna? That's where your car full of bottles of gasoline is parked. As the bard says, there's a method to my madness. I just say there's a stupidity to your madness. Why do you want them camped out near your car? It's the getaway vehicle. Oh yeah, good thinking. Hmm. <laughs> Hadn't thought of that. Well, I was just trying to get him to stay in one place while I straightened this mess out, and the sawmill was the first place I thought of. You'd make a good criminal. Would think some basic intelligence was a prerequisite for the job? Not at all, dear. <laughs> So we gotta get down in my car before the feds show up. Get those whiskey bottles full of gasoline out of the trunk. Then we gotta find those boys and get my wh Tony's whiskey back. And then, after that, we'll just have to see what we can do with those liquor bottles full of gasoline. Hmm. I bet if we tipped off federal agent Vincent Comstock, he would love to make a raid and seize those bottles when he thinks they're full of booze, not gasoline. Winston, you absolutely must not hurt that foolish man or anyone else. Gasoline is dangerous. I absolutely will do my best to make sure no one gets hurt, least of all me. This booze business is supposed to be about having a good time, not getting hurt. Oh, I know there's people in this town saying, look at those nickels. They sure have come down a notch since old Grandpa Augustus Nichols was a town physician, the only really educated man in town. I hear him whisper about Martha, how I took the maid to my bed chamber. And she is from the lowest of the low, the Atwoods. Twelve dirty kids come to school with hot potatoes in their pockets for lunch their hands are warm. And smelling like cows, they come herding into the schoolhouse. Well, I think about this and I get a terrible letdown. The more I think about it, the more I drink. <laughs> the more I drink, the more I think about it, I've made practically nothing myself but a meager fortune cooking corn mash. It's good stuff though. Oh, are you all right? Easy, old man. What happened there? Oh, oh, oh. It's okay. It's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, goodness, I, I must have dozed off. Long hours doing uh, good police work. <laughs> man to the job. Being constable, instructing the maid. And what else does each you do? Don't be rude, Uncle. Constable Nichols, I think that while you were here studying road maps, which I applaud, there's nothing like being prepared, but while you were doing that, we had a bit of a breakthrough in the case, didn't we, honestly? Yes, sir. A, a breakthrough? You damn near had a breakthrough in my noggin when a body come through the window and smashed to beat hell. Here I am weeding in the flower garden, and a bottle comes whizzing by and smashes on the road walkway. Settle down, Martha. We don't have time for vandals. We're after criminals here. Quite right. Some ain't quite right with none of you fellas. <laughs> I'm not quite right, too. Oh, you're all right as they go, but no, not quite right in the head. <laughs> as I was saying, Constable Nichols, we've made a breakthrough in this liquor smuggling case, and I think we're going to find the mother load of illegal liquor. We have a confidential informant. 
And we now know where they both produce and distribute the liquor. Congratulations are in order. I drink to that. You drink I, to I, anything. Well, if I drink, yes. Which you don't. No, of course not. I. <laughs> Why do you think I'm not quite right in the head? Well, you, you pretend to be doing one thing by enforcing the law when you're really doing altogether something else that has nothing to do with what you say you're doing. What's all this, then? <laughs> doing something other than enforcing the law? No, we are doing nothing else here, sir. We are enforcing the law. Yet That's all I live for is to enforce the law. <laughs> Miss, we are the only thing that stands between our fair country and complete debauchery and lawlessness. We never hardly seen lawlessness up here in Vermont until they started making laws nobody wouldn't follow. <laughs> <laughs> when you outlaw inhaling and only allow exhaling, you think everyone's going to hold their breath? We'd all be criminals. Scoff laws. Breathing both in and out. It'd be a state of lawlessness. Which it is. And we're here to put a stop to that. You're making my point better than I can. <laughs> well... I think that's enough on the subject from you, Martha. Don't you have some cleaning up to do? We all got some cleaning up to do. I'm sorry. She can be impertinent. It's all impertinent. Impertinent. <laughs> now, back to the case. Arthur and I have learned that the song that got along the river road is in fact a front for a very large bootlegging operation. We've learned that they both produce and distribute the liquor. We've heard this from a farmhand. Henry told you this? No, the, uh, the other farmhand, the younger fellow. Anyway, we need, to, we need to plan a stakeout, and I think we're going to come up aces on this one. This is going to look good for us boys coming up here to hostile farm country and taking out the big mob connections. This is going to look real good. And that's why I'd like Special Agent Chad Anderson to see how successful these field operations can be under the right leadership. Constable Nichols, may I use your phone? Certainly. Certainly. What about this farmhand, it wasn't Henry. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Yes. Operator, give me Boston, 526 Federal Building, 38 Commonwealth Avenue. He was some guy that Comstock was questioning about a sawmill operation. No doubt it's a lot like that sugar house operation. <laughs> <laughs> A young fellow, dressed in nice clothes? No, like a farmhand. He seemed like he was the uh, boyfriend of that school teacher. What's her name? Miss Payson. Boyfriend? Really? It seemed that way. Yes, hello. Yes, this is Agent Vincent Comstock. I'd like to talk to Special Agent Chad Anderson, please. Uh, yes, I'll wait. And he's the one who tipped your boss <laughs> to the sawmill being the big liquor operation. <laughs> Seemed kind of strange to me. Oh, hello, fellow Chad. Uh, oh, Mr. Anderson, sir, yes. This is Agent Richard Comstock. I'm on to something. Yes, that might involve some very good press for us, sir. Uh, I thought you might like to see your picture in the paper. Uh -huh. Busting liquor bottles with an axe. Yes, well, I think you've better gather the troops and get up here. I have a feeling this is going to be one explosive news story. <laughs> you convinced me to go along with your crazy mission. You're having a bad influence on my behavior. Darling, really? There is nothing wrong with your behavior. You behave most delightfully. How poetic. School teacher with loose morals joins criminal for a midnight escapade involving playing tricks on federal law enforcement agents. <laughs> oh, it would make a good story for the papers. Or the plot of a dime novel. School marms gone mad. <laughs> You're amazing. Crept to the dark with me. Helped me hold cases of bootleg whiskey like professional. You're like the Bonnie to my Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde are headed for a sticky end. <laughs> Look, the only reason I did this foolish and dangerous prank with you is because, for some unfathomable reason, I seem to be fond of you. And I don't want to see you arrested or shot by your colleagues feel a little responsible for what's happened here. You responsible? No, sugar, you're not responsible for this. Admit it, though, you had a blast. <laughs> it was a little like Halloween night, sneaking around in the dark. I'm just glad we got those bottles out of your car. Right under their noses. But putting them in a sawmill? 
Putting crates of whiskey bottles full of gasoline in a sawmill, it seems like a really bad idea. What if the stuff blows the place up? Look, they think they're sneaking on a big bootlegging operation down there. It's just going to keep them on the wrong trail while I get the actual whiskey back, so I have something besides my life for Tony and his boys when they show up. Nothing's going to blow up. And they never saw us, so they were watching the place in their cars the whole time. <laughs> we slipped in and out. Like Count Dracula <laughs> and his countess. <laughs> Count Dracula and his countess? Count Dracula? Good thing we brought that in for inside. There you are. Where the hell have you boys been? A better question would be, where have you been, Count Dracula? You look more like a day neighbor than a Dracula. Can't be bothering you, has Miss Payson. No, boys. Put the weapons down. Well, we'd like to put them down and pick up some fish bowls. But if Pa and Henry don't see us down at the lower field quick like, we'll be talking to Ma. Or run, like, listen to Ma. Or running for Ma, tool in hand. And then you running with your tool in your hand. Where the hell is my whiskey? We don't, we don't know nothing about no whiskey. Do we? We don't know nothing. Right hell you don't. Now, boys, we're going to work this out, or you'll both be staying after school and maybe get a good whipping. I'm in. Quiet, Winston. <laughs> now, look, the whiskey that you stole. We didn't steal no whiskey. Don't know why we'd steal whiskey. <laughs> You're both lousy liars, and I know that already. So listen, here's the problem. Winston here does not own the bootleg whiskey you stole or the car you stole it out of. The whiskey belongs to his employer, and this employer disciplines his employees by killing them. This employer is worse even than a school teacher. Bad as they are. That sounds bad. Worse even than a school teacher? So boys, just give me the whiskey back, okay? And whatever kind of containers you put it in, and then I'll tell you where you can find those bottles you fill with gasoline. You already put them back. They're in Henry's old collection of bottles in the back of the shed. We fill them up and drank some. Don't need to tell them every little thing. Look, I don't care about one or two guns. Just give me the rest back. Where is it? Well, we put all the bottles in the back of your car the night before last. Your car's gone, so you must put, know where they are. We put the bottles in the back of your car the day before yesterday. No, you did. My car wasn't even here the day before yesterday. Wait! The stuff must be in the back of Agent Vincent's Comstock's car. <laughs> Carlton fixed their revenue's car after he fixed yours, Winston. They put the bottles back in the wrong car. Oh, the plot thickens. <sighs> Just like my blood will thicken. Tony and his boys spill it all out on my body. I'm done in now. I've had it. God, you're so dramatic. I think we can get you out of this. What are you, some kind of criminal mind now? I'm not of the sort. I'm just trying to get you out of this jam. We just have to figure out how to get those bottles out of Agent Vincent Comstock's car without him seeing us do it. We're talking cases of whiskey here. Crates, actually. Henry put his old bottles in crates. So what is all this about Henry's old bottles? Well, when we stole the liquor and filled them up with gasoline, we put the liquor in bottles, what Henry had kept from off of his old family farm. There were the bottles his drunk of an old man used to pickle himself and torture the whole world. <laughs> well, we better get down to the lower field before Ma sees us. Okay, boys, you go mow. I'll take care of the hens, and Winston here can, I don't know, hide, I guess. <laughs> At dusk, we'll come back together. By then, Comstock and his man will be staking out the place, and we can figure out how to create a Diversion. Like make a commotion in the sawmill. And when they respond, we'll swipe the liquor right out of the back of his car. You are brilliant. Except you heard Comstock. He's going to have a troop of federal agents with him. He's sending in the reserves from Boston. We'll just have to create a diversion big enough so they all close in on the town. But they're bound to leave a rear guard. They're not going to leave Comstock's and the other cars unguarded. But they at least won't be sitting in Comstock's car. Uh, Comstock will be sure to be leading the charge. And if they don't all close in on the mill, they at least won't be watching Comstock's car. We can sneak in from the rear, get the whiskey, load it in your car, and you can get back to Boston with this, your last load ever, right? I mean, what's Norris Nicholas gonna do all the whiskey he makes if Winston don't truck it down the city for him? Is Foster Wheelock supposed to feed all his corn mash to cows? 
Oh, God, what a waste that would be. Corn mash for cows. I gotta keep running whiskey as a public service. Winston, I can't believe you could one minute be moaning about the dangers of being killed by thugs, and the next be making excuses for continuing your criminal career. Strange, isn't it? But, well, we better get down to Florida Field before we get an ass whooping. Sorry, Miss Payson, a butt whooping. <laughs> okay, boys, just meet us up at the camp around dusk. We can see the road out by the mill pond from there, and we can see how many men are manning the stakeout, and then figure out how to create that distraction and get them away from Comstock's cover. Yes, boss. I see two boys better better get out of this door here and get their butts back to down to that lower hay field right now, or I'll give them a beating like a red-headed stepchild on her birthday! I like it up here. Peas don't mind us using their camp when it ain't hunting season. It's a lovely view. Must be good for you to get out of that house down there, isn't it? I guess so. I get so angry with the way Constable Nichols treats you. He shows no respect for you at all. He don't show respect for his own self. Why do you stay? Isn't there another place you could live? Couldn't you go home to the farm? Look, Arnold. You're a good fella, but I don't know as I want to tell Mr. Lawman all my secrets. Please, Martha, don't look at me that way. Uh, I'm, I'm not like Agent Comstock. I'm just an ordinary guy trying to make his way. Wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Besides, I know what's going on. I know he's, Nichols is making hooch in the basement. I've seen the furtive looks, and I tried the locked door. Why don't you make an arrest and be a hero? Uh, I wouldn't do anything to hurt you, Martha. Oh, ain't that sweet. <laughs> you just like me because I own a gun and can shoot deer. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never seen a woman who can shoot deer. Well, maybe you're right. I suppose maybe it's you have become very special to me in such a short period of time because you can kill innocent animals. <laughs> well, there's worse reasons for fancying a gal. <laughs> so please, Martha, trust me. I swear I won't turn you into a, my employer. Tell me, why do you stay at Nichols' house? You, you aren't really just a maid, are you? I ain't saying. Norris, he's, well, he's like a child. Hmm. He ain't never grown up. When he wants a thing, he don't care about the consequences. We hardly have money for groceries, and he decides to hire a plumber to fix all the plumbing that burst three years ago. You're living without plumbing? Just the bathroom. Yeah, froze up, and the turlet burst, and all the pipes. But we got an outhouse out back. Works just fine. You just hang the turlet seat behind the stove and take it with you when nature calls. <laughs> Instead of calling that good enough, we about starve just so Norris can do his duty indoors. Mm. He has digestion problems. <laughs> Farts like a horse. <laughs> yeah, very delicate talking about flatulence. <laughs> a farting mare will never tire, while your farting man's the man to hire. <laughs> very good. But if you don't like living with a man, why don't you try and get a job and live on your own? What kind of job could I get? Why don't you get married? <laughs> you think I ain't got enough problems, but what, I want to get some man to be my boss around the clock? <laughs> I wouldn't try and be your boss. Is this an offer of marriage? What, <laughs> what would old Norris do without me? He doesn't deserve you. Besides, he's got it coming. Look, I, I, I don't know whether marriage suits me or not, but I can't stand to see you in a pickle with a barrel full of drunks. Well, like it or not, we all of us got to deal with drunks, whether it's liquor or their own selves they're drunk on. Mm. Some of your actual inebriates ain't so bad. Well, some of your sober crowd are a fair bunch of lunatics. <laughs> I admire your resignation, but what do you want for yourself? Do you want to go on propping up that bootlegging buffoon? Oh, I guess it's just my lot in life. Can't see leaving Willie and Norris to the mercy of town like Byron Barker. <laughs> Byron, he's an odd one. It's 
That's why the town don't mind feeding him. He just ain't like a normal person. He has a need to put things back. What do you mean, put things back? <laughs> well, <laughs> one time he stole all the eggs out of the icebox down at Killerin's house down in the village, stuffed them all back under the hens in the hen house. <laughs> <laughs> and then another time, I'm out digging in the vegetable garden. Uh -huh. I got a basket of carrots all dug up, right? I go to harvest the onions, come back. Byron had snuck in and planted all them carrots <laughs> back in the garden. <laughs> this other time, he shoveled all his Uncle Oswald's snow back onto the walkway after his poor old uncle had just finished shoveling it off. He's odd. He just, he just has to put things back where they've been moved from. I wonder if he could put my heart back. What? Oh, no, nothing, just thinking out loud. Mm, that's a nice change. <laughs> Most of the men I've had to do with just get loud without thinking. <laughs> Look at that. There's that posse your boss called in. Only it ain't quite the army he was expecting. Looks like only one car's come to join the fun. Yeah, we better get down there. Comstock will want to know where his faithful lieutenant is. Can you talk about me being a maid? <laughs> Two cars parked over by the woods at the edge of Rawson's hayfield. One of them's Comstock's, but I have no idea who the other might be. I mean, reinforcements for the stakeout, no doubt. I think you're right. <coughs> so now, my evil criminal mastermind, how are we going to create a diversion to get him away from Comstock's car? Have you bought this through yet? Let's just wait until the boys get here and we'll figure it out. Oh, yes. Those little hasty boys are gonna show us how to trick the revenue into allowing us to steal the liquor they themselves stole and stash in the revenue his car. Splendid idea. You'd be surprised. Here they come now. Hey boys, it's about time. You were supposed to be here at 7.30. It's gonna be dark pretty soon. We're sorry, Miss Payson. Yes, yeah, sorry. We really hit one of the bottles we took out of Winston's, Mr. Comstock's car, rather. And he's been at hard. I'm talking hard. Miss Payson. How? Are you in? And what we'll brings you to the tower is going? Sesh. Oh, Willie, we're not in the village. Oh, Willie, what have you done with yourself now? Drunk in a boar hog. You twice coming up the hill. My good man, the Nichols men do not puke. We are above the puke. Right down the puke, I'd say. Wallowing. Like father, like son, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, my father. Uh, that's not what I expect. Willie, why don't you come and lay down here in the grass for a while? I'm afraid, the old bastard. I'd soon shoot him as no shit. But for my son, I'd shoot him by God. That boy pretty well don't know when to stop. Oh, he's stopped now, <laughs> but it ain't pretty. Look, boys, we have business to attend to here. We can take care of Willie later. Now, how are we going to create a distraction at the mill and get those revenuers away from those cars? If only we had a bomb. A bomb? Are you nuts? What if we dropped a bomb from the airplane? Be realistic. Well, I'm just saying, if we had a bomb, get them away from the cars. That's an idea, mister, but it ain't a good idea. You can call me Winston. Not a good idea, Winston. We don't want to blow the hell out of Alden's Mill. I didn't say you could call me Winston. Not a good idea, Winston. We don't want to ruin Alden's Mill. So, what's your great idea? I'm thinking. Well... Let him think. Try getting him to stop thinking. I've got it. Told you. Got what? There's a wood stove in the shop in the back of the mill. We don't need a bomb! We can sneak up in through the belts and pulleys by the flume and start firing the wood stove. Then federal boys will see the smoke, think it's still being fired up, and come around. Yeah, I get it. Perfect. I told you the boys were clever. Not too clever for getting us into this mess in the first place. Hey, let's just let bygones be bygones. It's worth a try. But you can't just walk through the front door while they're watching the place. Do you boys know how to get through the belts and the pulleys without being seen? We smoked many a stolen cigar in the green hopper of that mill. We can sneak in there and broad dan without nobody seeing. We can by God. Okay, you boys go down there and you sneak on the other side of the river. Uh, well, Winston and I can go up through the woods on the other side of River Road and sneak up behind the cars where the revenuers are staking the place out. After you get the fire lit, just get out of there. 
and be very careful not to light any fires near, near those bottles of gasoline. When the cops close in on the mill, we'll get the whiskey from Comstock's car, we'll haul it through the woods to Winston's car, and he can be on his way well before they figure out that what they think is whiskey is actually gasoline.
hell happened there? Who were those boys? They're supposed to be lighting a fire on the wood stove. They're revenors. They saw something else, and they took off down Mill Road in their cars. There's no way Ethan and Alan had time to get a fire lit. They must have seen something else and felt they had to move in fast. Who'd have thought they would drive those big cars down Mill Road? Winston. I think I saw something else down by the mill before Comstock and his men moved down there. Over an hour ago. I saw someone in a white cowboy hat. It had to be Byron Barker. What Byron Barker be doing at the mill? He sleeps there sometimes, but this time he looked like he was carrying something and moving a lot faster than usual. That must be why they moved in so fast, but it was getting pretty dark and I'm not sure about this. What about the boys? Where were they? I mean, do you think they had time to sneak into the mill before the cops descended on the joint? My god, you're right. They would have just been getting inside the mill when Comstock and his men moved in there. They might be in trouble. Good lord, I've never gone so fast in my life as when those cars took off with us sneaking up so close. Oh, I hope Ethan and Alan are all right. You can hide, right? I mean, they're good at hiding. But there's a whole stash of whiskey bottles in the mill. If the Federals catch the boys with those bottles, they'll be in big trouble. It will be my fault. No, Phoebe, no. It wouldn't be your fault. It'd be mine. I don't want to got us into all this. I'm sorry, really. But it's not fret. I mean, it's not going to be an easy thing for those city boys to catch Ethan and Alan. And let's not forget, there's no whiskey in those bottles. They're full of gasoline. But those boys are like St. Ducks in there. And they would have just been getting inside the mill when Comstock and his men raided the place. And there are five of them. And they have guns. And those boys are in there with a bunch of bottles of gasoline. Oh my god. Oh, please let that not be the poor boys all blown up. Oh no. to drink out of. And if you hadn't lit it on fire with your goddamn cigar, you would have drunk half of it and died on the spot if I know you and your lack of consideration. <laughs> Gasoline? Well, no wonder it lit up like that. I chucked it down the grate in the cellar hole and it lit up and blew all the hell. Everything went black. I come to in the dining room. When you chucked that burning bottle down cellar, she lit the whole mess of bottles that was full of gasoline down there on the storage shelves. Ow, the blue blaze is the gasoline getting our basement. Well, that's a long story involving Byron Barker, Winston, Comstock and the Revenuers, a school teacher, Pease Boys, Ethan and Allen, and your own dear son, Willie. Oh, Jesus, I don't think I want to hear that tale. I'm just glad the place blew all the shit where I jumped back to Ashley. Yeah, might as well look on the bright side, right? <laughs> what I don't see is as much bright in this situation, really. Well, you personally are not too bright, that's for sure. God damn it, Martha! Hey, it comes up. You have a hell of a lot of I... I came, I came up here to, <clears throat> for some good press on a big seizure of contraband, and instead, this silly stakeout, the arrest of the year, turns out to be two teenage boys with two bottles of booze and a sawmill. What the hell do you mean by this, Comstock? Sir, every indication was that we had got to the source of a very large <laughs> operation. This looked like a big event, sir, by every indication. But two bottles? Then we crack them open, and instead of booze, we find gasoline. <coughs> gasoline, cop stuff. Hmm, that's good. Gasoline, cop stuff is what we'll call you now. Oh, gasoline, cop stuff. <laughs> oh, to have your badge and your gun. Yeah, take his badge and his gun. I mean, he had to stake out a sawmill because we'd gotten a tip off from a farmhand. He swore it was a bootlegging operation. And before that, the big operation was what? A sugar house. 
Yeah, yeah, Vincent here had us stake out a maple sugar house. Oh, shut up. I'll handle this. No, you shut up, you big idiot. Oh, oh, your career is on the line here. Oh, my career as a federal agent is over. <laughs> ah, boy, Arnold, you tell them Hong Yongs how it is. <laughs> Actually, video boy, why don't you kiss my ass? <laughs> now you got him. You'd better think carefully about what your dear old dad might feel about you throwing away a career in the government. Speaking of throwing away your career, Comstock, you're very close to earning yourself a desk job in Hoboken. Or maybe a jail cell. Sir, my name is Phoebe Payson, daughter of Massachusetts Senator Reginald Payson, who you may have heard of. I'm a school teacher in this town, and I know a thing or two about what's going on here. Sure, I'm sure. Of course I know Senator Payson. Great American. I don't know what Agent Vincent Comstock here has been telling you about illegal liquor running operations, but I think you should have a good look in the back of his car, sir. What in Lord's name are you talking about? There's only Vermont dirt in the back of my car. What? Why don't we just march into the driveway and have a look? What do you say, mister? Oh, um, Anderson. Special Agent Chad Anderson. Uh, pleased to meet you. By the way, what the hell happened to this room? <laughs> Plumbing blew up on account of indigestion. <laughs> Don't stop, Martha. Keep, let him have it. I'm so busy. Special Agent Anderson, Chad, shall we have a look and see what's in that car? Uh, I have nothing to hide. I came all the way down here from the uh, Barry Montpelier Times Argus. I <laughs> made some photos of public servants, heroes actually, busting up cases of bootleg liquor. My editor says you're going to run it front page, above the fold. This is excellent. Excellent. You want your criminal act caught on the front page? My criminal act? I'm the one making the bust here. What are we taking pictures of? Can you hang around until we find a contraband? I'm sure to find it soon. Let's just take a look in those cars. What do you say? Comstock, Anderson. I have nothing to hide. We'll see. Yes. Let's have a look, Comstock. And I will take pictures. So, now, Winston, he's a photographer for the newspaper. <laughs> well, I'll be dead. I had no idea the teacher girl was the daughter of a senator. I'm the one who'll be damned. Well, you sure will. Can I have a word with you, Martin? Alone? Mister, what have you got to say to the maid? Don't mister me. I know she's no maid. She is a full-on bootlegger, and you are nothing but a drunken old hog. Well, anything you got to say to her, I got a right to hear. She is in my employ. Your employ? In a pig's eye, I am. Well, you get room and board for your service. Uh, Martha, uh, I have just given up my career for you, and I would hate to see you go to jail. I could care less about this man, but... I know the two of you, well, mostly you, Martha, are making whiskey in the basement. Not no more we ain't. Blown to shit. <laughs> <laughs> but if you decide to quit your job or not, or arrest us or not, well, that's your own business. I didn't have nothing to do with that. Well, I've been thinking, and uh, I, I've grown really fond of you in the last week, and... I was wondering if maybe it ran both ways, and maybe you kind of fancy me, too. Well, you are fancy. Well, that's enough of that! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I thought you were just taking with me because I own a gun and could shoot deer. <laughs> well, that's true, too. <laughs> what does an urban, well-educated man like yourself Seeing an old woodchuck cow kid squeezing farm down like Mark I ain't that old. <laughs> I'll take you to Washington, D.C. with me. We can make a life together. I don't, I'm not going to no Washington, D.C. No. Add a girl, Martha. Don't add a girl, me. <laughs> you, Arnold, are going to stay here and help me fix up this mess. And you're going to help old Norris make bootleg whiskey. Oh, no, he isn't. Oh, yes, he is. He has a mind to. Only other way this way is going to go is if you and maybe me are going to jail. Martha, you want me to stay here with you in Constable Nichols' house 
and take up the bootlegging business. Oh, there's pl plenty of good money to be made. Also, I live here and I ain't moving. <laughs> You're about as good a fella as I like to get around here, Arnold. I like you all right. <laughs> It'll be handy to have an actual man around the house. <laughs> well, don't I have something to say about this, Martha? Not Are me. I an actual man? <laughs> Not unless you want to go to jail. No, actually, you're not. You're not an actual man. <laughs> you're about as useless as tits on a bolt. Do you hear the way she talks about me? Do you see the way she looks at me? It's another thing I don't like about her. Uh, well, I'll tell you what he does like. I cook his supper. I keep his house. I mind his hens, I shovel his walk, I feed his kid, clothe his kid, buy the groceries, pay the bills, mow the fucking lawn, stack the garbage. All right, all right, I get the picture. I'll stay. <laughs> this could be a good career change. Now this is a great story. Special agent called up to help with a big arrest. Instead, he ends up arresting his own subordinate for a violation of the Volstead Act. Sir, I have no idea at all how those cases of whiskey got in the back of my car. How would I have gotten a load of whiskey in those old bottles? That's what we intend to find out. Now, Comstock, if you talk, you may not go to jail. You've already lost your badge, but you've still got a lot to lose. My assistant, Agent Arnold Young, will vouch for me. I have nothing to do with the whiskey smuggling. I've been up here doing law enforcement, good police work. Isn't that right, Arnold? My faithful number two. No, oh, I smell number two all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, now that I've quit my job with the service, I have to say, Vincent here has been acting mighty suspicious. Hasn't he, Martha? Norris. Oh, he's pretty damn suspicious, all right. <laughs> That's right. Very suspicious. Well, there you have it, Comstock. I've burnished my reputation, and you are going to jail. <laughs> no. What I want to know is why the photographer didn't just take us out back and get some good shots of us busting up those bottles. He did say something about the light in the background. He said if he took the bottles down the road and set them up artistically the way the good ones, <laughs> he might get a much better shot and um, it could be reproduced by the local papers. They even end up in the Boston Globe. Well, so they're, they're taking the bottles and setting them up so that we can get a better shot of them busting them up with an axe. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, he'll call us when they're uh, all set up. I think he must be a very talented young photographer. I'd have to agree with you there. <laughs> Maybe everyone would like to have a cup of tea in the kitchen while we wait. <clears throat> Setting up photographs, especially when you're as much of an artist as that photographer. Well, that takes time. <laughs> What in the hell happened here? I thought I dreamt that explosion. I wish I dreamt it. I got me one hell of a hangover. Me too, boy. Me too. <laughs> so these are the bottles that Henry dug up from the cellar hole of his family's old farm. What is so special about them? He just feels they're all he has left of his family. Even though the thing that destroyed his father, and later his whole family, came in these bottles. Mm. Think he'd want to be rid of them? <laughs> well, he doesn't. He cherishes them. Get the booze back into some other containers and get Henry's bottles back to him, okay? Okay, your highness. Now you're catching on. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Phoebe, the senator's daughter? <laughs> I had no idea you were Senator Payson's daughter. And I had no idea you were a photographer. <laughs> that was very clever of me. <laughs> If you do say so yourself. Well, I got the whiskey back. Now I'm headed south to find Tony, take my beating, and give him his whiskey and his car. And then you know what you'll do after that, right? 
Oh yes, I'm gonna come back here and make sweet love to you every day. No, Winston. I'm gonna call my father, the senator, and he's gonna put a clever young man on his staff, and you're gonna get the hell out of the bootleg running business. Well then why don't I just stay on the farm and stay here in Vermont, be with you. You wouldn't last 10 minutes with a hate rate. You need the city, you know it's true. Well, why don't you come with me? I can't stand the city, I left that behind. I want to make my life here in Vermont. All right, well, then how about Burlington? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> or even Montpelier. <laughs> Compromise? Maybe someday. I do love you, Winston. But first, you need to get some credentials. Get some good job experience that doesn't involve breaking the law. Work for my father. Do well. And then we'll see if this will all come together. Or not. You best pack this liquor up and get the hell out of there. Get, or get the hell out of here. I kept them thinking that the photographer was coming to get them for the big picture in the paper. But I can't keep them any longer. They need the bottles for evidence and they still want their picture in the paper. That's right, old boy. Get yourself going. But come back real soon for some whiskey, because I've joined Martha here in the bootlegging business. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm done with that. Now, you're going one way, and I'm going the other. Now, you're going to take the back door, and I'm going to use the front door? Change positions? I'm going straight, and you're going to run on the wild side? I don't know as I'd exactly call him wild. <laughs> Winston here is going to lead a, a decent life as a bright young man on Senator Payton's staff. Aren't you, Winston? <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> now, will you help me load this whiskey? Packard's down by the water trough. What do you know? Winston comes to Vermont to pursue a life of crime, and he ends up in a straight job because of a girl. I come to Vermont, pursue a career, and end up in a life of crime because of a girl. <laughs> Them girls can be mighty persuasive. <laughs> you think he's really going to go straight? Hard saying, not knowing. Martha Gatwood. I heard your place down the village had a big explosion of Blue Norris's new bathroom all to hell. Yeah. <laughs> How'd he do that? Well, ma'am. I think it was indigestion. <laughs> yeah. you, you see, when I was a girl, we used to eat indoors and sit on the two holer outdoors. But nowadays, with these new fashions, we eat outdoors and sit on the turlet indoors. And you see what's come of it. <laughs> <laughs>